everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lisa Brazelton. I'm here with Chris Noble. We are with Wisdom from the Edge, and we are all about how to master your mental well being. And today we're going to have an amazing podcast talking about what is reality and, you know, where in this three dimensional simulation are you? And we'll talk about where we are in that simulation and how to not navigate, you know, life as as we choose our own adventure in a video game. Because um, life is kind of like a video game. So we look forward to having you join us. So what was this download? Then? So the download, should I read the download? Is that Whatever. What yeah, read it out. I didn't know you wrote it down. That's it's even better. It says that we get to choose to incarnate into the simulators or the simulation of human on earth. And it's a unique simulator in that we get to manifest anything instantly from our mental and emotional bodies. And coupled with amnesia, this simulator is both individual and collective. So meaning our emotions and our thoughts go into uh, the, this matrix field or soup. It's like a collective soup. Um, whereby the collective play out in the game of humanity while simultaneously our inner world of individual is another micro simulator so and then it goes on to say that this is akin to a video game right so we can look at how the game of life is played by looking at the glimpses of the way video is where we are making choices and every move that we make that only affects our avatar, but also our opponents. And then it also affects the world in which the game is played in, which is fascinating, right? So then the question is, How do we want to play the game? The question is, what pebbles do we want to throw in the still pond called life? And what ripple effects do we want to have? And so the last part of what, what they said is that if we have this idea and we understand it even just a little bit, what we're doing is we're expanding our consciousness in, in a much deeper way to be able to play this game of life. And because we both know that our thoughts and our feelings and our actions and our beliefs all have a vibrational frequency and they play a role in the way in which we experience life. And that's what it is meant by this simulation, right? And if we have the ability to have an awareness, then what is our actual directive? Meaning, what is our purpose? And um, we can play then. We can have lightness. We can teach it. We can become it. We can embrace it. We can do whatever we want with it. And I think about that and I'm like, well, that lightens the load. Because we try to get so complex in life, but we can't find answers to complexities with complexities. <laughs> well, it's like, what is it Einstein or someone says, like, you can't solve a problem with the same mentality that caused the problem, you know? So that makes sense. And, and it's funny you say that because I... I was recently reflecting on the same. I mean, I love thinking about life as a video game. It makes the most sense for me. And I find, I'm sure a lot of people out there, it's it's actually a really 
tangible way to kind of start looking at what your existence is in this third dimensional matrix reality. And you have to start thinking of it as, you know, you yourself are essentially an extension of the one source of creation that wants to experience itself. But think about it this way. I know Alan Watts has talked about this and others, certainly this is like an ancient wisdom piece, but it's, you know, if you were the creator of everything in this universe and you could literally do anything after some amount of time, whatever time really is, you would start to crave to experience something without limited, without limitless creation, because it's almost more interesting to put some forms of limitations on yourself and even go as far as to experience what would be life as let's say a human being and throw in throw in the amnesia component so that you forget that you're literally the creator of all and you are literally just a an extension of that one source of creation that can do anything at any time anywhere right so how fun and more exciting would it be to be in a game where you forget you're even in the game and that's how you can i mean of course it's how you can lose yourself in the game but also like you mentioned that's how when you wake up to the fact that we're in this game like neo waking up in the matrix it's the same idea where you get to start to play with it and you get to start now playing with reality playing with your own powers as a human being just like neo in the matrix starts to you know stop bullets and slow down time and all these things like we can do that the more we wake up to the fact that we're in this game and start to play with it like you said yeah i i love what you said and we all are an extension i mean i'm in the process of writing which i've been writing and understanding at the same time the principle of mentalism that we are all one mind and it's mind blowing. And at the same time, it's so simple. And I think the simplest form of everything in which I understand in this deep dive or these downloads and everything that I've been receiving over the last few years is that the essence is love. The essence is love. And this, this, if we can awaken to the understanding that love, and that's the thing, I think most humans are like, it's not that simple. And it's like, mm, yes, it is. <laughs> uh. It is that simple. Because if, if the game is all about remembering that love is the most important, that's how you win in this game of life everything else is an illusion so to, to i mean I, you and i've been talking about this for years and i know people are like ah you know go back in the 60s or you know you don't know what's going on in the world and get your head out of the sand or you know life isn't like that but if I think that most people don't want to take responsibility, let alone have the capacity to understand that if you can just imagine that you are so powerful to create your own reality, what would you do differently? And it's not that difficult when we embrace that piece. I, th I think the difficulty though is is the programming that's around all of us right and by, by programming for the watching and listening audience what i mean is you know think about our minds as a computer you know and how often or not so often do you upgrade your software and uh how often does your software get influenced by outer you know things on the website viruses or um, things of that nature. And basically anytime you're watching television or you're consuming mainstream uh, content or you're watching films, television, playing video games, anything, um, or just going to school, you know, everything around us influences us. Obviously we know that, but what it's also doing is it's programming stories and ideas into our belief systems. Right. And you say this all the time, Lisa, where it's like, how you know, you, you do something enough and then it becomes uh, a habit right and things can start to the more they're repeated in your reality the more they become a belief you know or they become a habit they become something that just solidifies 
doesn't make it true, doesn't make it the absolute reality, just makes it a story, just makes it a part of this concept, this uh, this programming that we all have, that we're still all, uh, all a part of. I'm My life is going to be continually deprogramming and reprogramming, you know? So it's just like, it's a, it's a it, journey. Absolutely. And I think it, you know, I'm always going back to the matrix is the moment where they realized that they were plugged in. And can we get to a point where we can unplug and always be unplugged from the matrix? Now that to me is kind of a, my own lifelong journey. And um, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm like, when I get upset or I feel myself moving through an emotion, I'm immediately aware of where's the mirror? What's going on inside? <laughs> this isn't about anybody else except for me. And I think it would be so amazing to get to a point which I feel like can happen in this lifetime where I am truly unplugged, where I don't, I don't get triggered by anything in the past because I see it all so clearly in this matrix. I see it and I can see it, but I'm still affected by it. You know? Yeah. You know, like my first thought was like, perhaps when you're fully unplugged, it's when you've transcended the third Rea third dimensional reality altogether but then i was like no hold on like you know ascended masters certainly in the the in our history like the buddhas and jesus's and um the krishna's and, and all these other beings let's say um certainly figured that out or already came into this reality figured with it figured out although some, i guess they, actually, they all had a journey actually all of them had pretty incredible uh journeys of, of self-realization that brought them into the frequency and the ability to to kind of like transcend this third dimensional reality which gave them all these we call superhero powers right or special abilities and uh and ways of navigating this reality that were unlike everyone else around them but i guess there's also another component and this gets into like another whole concept of like the yuga cycles and cycles of consciousness on planet earth and if the, for those of again watching and listening if you're not familiar with the yuga cycles the same as the age of the zodiac it's the same as what plato calls the great year it's actually a twenty six thousand year cycle or just under twenty six thousand years uh, of a very long celestial cycle and it actually follows the tilt of earth's axis and that tilt takes almost twenty six thousand years for it to do one full rotation and for some reason that affects the level of consciousness on planet earth as uh, well a cyclical um, journey where you've got states of really high consciousness, meaning everyone, everyone on the planet is vibrating at a Jesus, at a Buddha, at a Krishna level. And then you have the lower part of the, uh, of the cycle, which we are actually just coming out of right now. And that's where everyone's vibrating at a level that we're all vibrating at kind of right now, not all of us, but certainly let's say a majority of, of the beings on this planet are. And usually when you're in the low state of the cycle, that's when you're in a state of materialism where you are com almost completely disconnected from spirit, from consciousness. And at the, the opposite of that, on the, let's say the golden age or the highest cycle of the yuga cycle, then you're vibrating at a very, very high vibration that's very much transcended the third dimensional reality is likely living in a fifth density or a fifth dimensional reality and is of that full love, full connection, fully connected to spirit, fully connected to consciousness, um, source, everything like that. And so I also wonder how much of, I'm sure as on an individual level, we can always unplug and find that, um, yep. that way to transcend. However, it's going to be the most challenging in the state we're in right now, vibrationally speaking, not impossible, but that's just kind of where we're at right now too. Because, so I, because of the collective? Yeah. And because of the state of the planet, like, again, it's in this lower cycle of of actual it's a frequency itself so you're also working with or against the frequencies of of the galaxy um where our planet is currently on and it's moving up and and we have all that and it, i think what's more difficult it's not that 
we can't connect with these um with with the cosmos and with consciousness at any time we absolutely can but i think it's the consciousness of everybody else on the planet and certainly the powers that be that run this planet that are in that lower state of control dominance materialism lack of spirit lack of love in a sense and that's why we all feed off of a collective consciousness and it might keep us more in a lower vibration just makes it a little more challenging not impossible just a little bit more challenging in, in times like these so i'm curious as to where are we in that twenty six thousand year cycle it's a good question. There's different. I just did a podcast on my Ancient Mysteries on Earth channel maybe two months ago with a friend of mine who's really knowledgeable in the Yuga cycles. And he was saying that there's some debate, you know, it's just like anything. Well, when did the cycle start, right? And who decides that? Well, yeah, there's a couple of theories that we actually left the bottom, let's call it the Iron Age, because it basically breaks down as I like the, the more Western slash Greek breakdown of it, which is Golden Age. Silver Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Golden Age, highest level of consciousness. Iron Age, lowest level of consciousness, which is where we're at right now. Um, so we think, he, he thinks that we may have even left it almost 200 years ago, which you look at like the peak of um, like the end of like, well, it's like the start of a lot of colonialism, but it's kind of like the peak of that. And there's, there's, there's sort of almost like a peak of violence around maybe 150 years ago. That's very debatable though. Um, and then there is there is more technology and more awakening through science and technology coming in in the 1800s and 1900s. Um, he thinks it could have been as, as long as 200 years ago, but the modern way of looking at it was 2012, the Mayan calendar, where everyone was freaking out about the end of the world. That was actually the end of the bottom part of the Yuga cycle, and now we're on the incline after uh, 2012. So then, talk to me about then um, the age of Aquarius, which we're in. And um, where do we see the collective, which of course is based on individual consciousness, but where do we see a jump or a leap in that? Because I, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine who's a mathematician, and we had a conversation about the poles, mm -hmm. right? And um, in particular, um, you know, these poles are a, um, it's like a bifurcation point where when the, when the poles last shifted and where they are or when they are ready to shift again, um, if those two are aligned, right, where we're, we're, we know then scientifically, we should know when the poles are going to switch again. And how long does that take? Does that mean that that coincides with, you know, this, this, you know, this higher consciousness that could mirror or mimic the golden age? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, this is a tricky one, you know, the pole shift, you know for our audience is it's a it's an interesting theory it's um and i don't fully understand it myself and i don't know exactly how the frequency of the pull shifts um i don't know if it's particularly consistent so it's hard to tell at the same time you know basically when you look back through our history there's we go through cycles of cataclysm and i, I know graham hancock certainly and other researchers have pointed out that we move through an asteroid a very um dense asteroid belt actually twice a year um, so we moved through like an area of debris that would bring on um, a high likelihood of some form of cataclysm. It doesn't have to be earth, uh, like life ending all, all around, like the dinosaurs or anything intense like that, but mm -hmm. certainly would cause upheaval, could cause a reset in certain ways of civilization. This actually happens uh, as frequently as every like 2,500 years or, or 4,000, 5,000 years. Like there seems to be these resets, but they, they they happen on different increments. Some are smaller, some are larger. The last really big one was 12,500 years ago, which coincided with the end of the last ice age, right? And you have the ice core samples from Greenland and other geological evidence to now support this. And this is where you get all the biblical flood myths and these permeate, like, permeate throughout, oh my God, hundreds of cultures worldwide talk about a mythical flood, right? So that was the big last one. And that may have come from a pole shift, 
It could have come from a solar outburst, could have come from an asteroid impact. That's hard to say, but some of the evidence that support, supports pole shifts is actually some really old ancient sites around the world are all very astronomically aligned to certain phenomenon in the cosmos. But now that we look at some of these older sites, they're off their alignment by several degrees. And you could say that, okay, well, they just didn't have the tools to properly align these things exactly as accurately. But if you've looked into it the way I have, certain these ancients were so bang on with their calculations. You look at how they built things like the Great Pyramid, where it's off one one hundredth of an inch, like in its accuracy. I mean, it's so accurate. It's more accurate than how we build today. These these ancients weren't going to be off by several degrees when they're trying to align things. But when you take a pole shift into account, they've been able to realign these sites to where they would have been after the la- or before the last pole shift, and they line up perfectly. So there's some evidence to support that the pole shifts do, and these pole shifts may have happened like more on like a larger increment, like every 10,000, 15,000 years or so, or even longer. It's tough to say, but with a pole shift, as you can probably imagine, I, I think of it like the whole planet kind of goes, like just, <laughs> just flips in a way and imagine what would happen on the surface when that happens. Um, pretty intense. I was told- that that actually takes a long time to do. It doesn't just like suddenly flip. Okay. Right. Where we're, we're actually like upside down. But here's you know here's an interesting question that maybe our audience would like to know a little bit more about because I I love where you're going with this. Is how do we take this knowledge and put it in the context of what we originally started talking about, mm. which is we are the source of our experiences and we are the creator of our reality. And if we want to experience life in a certain way and we are not, we get to choose to experience it in the way in which we want to. And, um, and to, to live life in this space where we are victims to a collective energy around the world or within our neighborhood or within our country or is, is a, I'm going to go so far as to say it could be an illusion, right? Because, you know, somebody can have a, we can, we can witness an accident in front of us and there could be 10 different witnesses and every single person is going to have a different, recount of that particular accident why because we all have different perspective and it's through our perspective of consciousness that actually creates the way in which we perceive our reality so taking into account these amazing ancient this knowledge and this ancient wisdom how do we work within this and still navigate our you know our daily conscious simulator how does that all work what's your thought on that well it's like like our everyday life the the everyday conscious simulator you know it's basically you know what what do you do with this information in your everyday life and i know for myself i mean when i first started this research maybe close to 10 years ago i um I got pretty deep in that rabbit hole and it got, it got really uh, challenging. Actually, it got, I went through a c- couple of years of like a deep depression and paranoia, to be honest, with just like, what in the hell could possibly happen? You know, all these variables, all these possibilities of just everything, um, whether it's a pull shift to other ways in which, you know, civilization could crumble before our very eyes and all this kind of stuff. It was very, it was very much an apocalyptic kind of energy in those years. And, not a fun place to be on a consistent basis. I'll tell you that. So I had to really take a step back for a bit and recognize that all this knowledge is simply it's knowledge, it's information, you know, and just like the news is information to a degree, it's, uh, it's all everything's information, uh, whether it's true or false is also that's also a debate of, of so much complexity. It's really just what everything we receive in this reality is information, which is why we're here. We're here to experience everything because everything has value 
everything has value for this source of consciousness, which we are extensions of experiencing ourselves in this unique way, all of it, all of it's important. We want to take it all in. Right. But a way to, to navigate it with maybe a little bit more peace and a little bit more, you know, joy and playfulness is to, for me, at least what I've had to do is just acknowledge that all of this amazing stuff we've been talking about is absolutely possible. Anything's possible. And so with that same mindset, everything we just talked about and all these potential demises of civilization or something, is it just a possibility? It's just one branch in the timeline. Uh, anyone that comes to you with predictions is literally just giving you an option of a timeline that we have to experience in this life. So nothing's really truly set. And also nothing is really truly, you know, out of your, not want to say control, lots is, a lot of life is out of our control to an extent but what we absolutely have full control over is our perception of that reality and when you can shift your perception that's when you can shift everything in your reality so even though you could be looking at a world of chaos when you're looking at it through love and through gratitude and joy and still a sense of connectivity to everything and play You can look at like how many times, like what I love about things like British comedy is the darkness of their comedy. They make jokes about death all the time. You know, a lot of great comedy comes from the most horrific suffering sides of life. When you can put a spin of of laughter, like why do we even laugh as a species? What, what's, what is the point of all that? And you see things like the laughing Buddha, that some of the most ascended masters had the most beautiful sense of humor for the most dark things. And I think that's, that's part of it. It's like you can choose to look at everything as like uh, utter suffering and chaos and meaninglessness, or you can look at it as um, a beautiful reflection of, of where we might be collectively, uh, which is in the state of, uh, and I know this is what I think Robert Edward Grant was saying in that video you sent me, um, which is a fantastic uh, podcast. We should probably put links to it in the show notes, probably for people yep. to follow yep. up on. Is and this just it's just, so. it's just so good. And, and what was he saying? He says that, Really, when you think about it, if you're looking at how divided and how angry we are as a as a collective right now, all that is is showing you how divided and angry you are at yourself and at right. your in, your internal world. It's all a reflection. Right. And so, if all you're seeing right now is suffering and chaos and meaningless and just violence and just horrific meaninglessness, basically, then that is a cue. For you to go right. inward and examine what's really going on within yourself because it's all the same as above so below so um thank you principle of correspondence um and it reminds me of that most people live their life because they have to see in order to believe and yet it is the opposite we have to believe in order to see and that belief system of i'm interested in taking responsibility for my reality right now and even just a little bit you know i tell you know clients all the time you know just take a baby step just take a baby step and if we can take these little baby steps and say you know what maybe i'm not seeing this argument with my spouse or my upset about whatever my car having a flat tire or I could see it in a different light. We start to see changes in our reality. And it's that stone's throw. It's the, it's the pebble in the, in the still pond. What are the ripples? The ripples are our experiences. I want to have a joyful life. I, I want to wake up every day going, what? and I got this from you. What magic and miracles are going to show up in my life today? What a wonderful way of waking up. Not, oh my God, I'm going to check my phone. I got to see what's on, you know, social media. You know, I'm exhausted. I'm not happy. I don't like my job. I don't like my relate. Whatever we think we're going to get. And so this whole believing is in our scene. And as soon as we make a commitment to something that we really want, and we keep our focus in that, I think that it shows up this or something better. It's always this or something better. But it takes it takes courage, right? To 
go beyond the borders of the unknown or the known into the unknown. And it takes a leap of faith. And look, what we're surrounded by religion where people believe, but how do people believe in their, in themselves? And, and I, I am a believer of when we find ourselves and our love, not just who we think we are, but all of us, ourself, everything that we've experienced in life, then love shows up all the time. Love is magical in that way. Right? I think it's, uh, we were talking about this at some point too, where love, you know, isn't really even an emotion anymore. Love just is, it's reality. It is, is, it's everything. Love like, is. What is existence? Existence is love. You know, when I've had my, uh, I'm curious to hear what you've experienced, Lisa, for myself, when I've had some out of body experiences through psychedelics or just some incredibly profound meditation moments, sometimes in sacred sites, sometimes like in the Great Pyramid or in Adam's Calendar in South Africa, I've just had these profound moments of what feels like I'm experiencing true reality and the feeling and the only word that I can find because our language is so limited to explain you know, the ineffable to explain the non-material. But what I would always come back to is like, what does this higher reality feel like? It feels like love. Just feels like tons of love, like the most unconditional you've ever imagined, um, piercing through every aspect of your being. It's just all of it. It's just love. Uh, and I'd love to, I'd love to hear uh, what you've <laughs> experienced, pun intended, on uh, that same kind of, you know, I know you've had some amazing, many amazing meditation and, and out of uh, this reality experiences. So what, is, what has it felt like for you? Um, clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, I, again, just as a, a side note, and you touched on this, we have not caught up from a language perspective to our consciousness as to where we are today. Um, I love making up words because <laughs> it's time that we get some new words um, to describe. Uh, you know, I love different languages because there is ways in which one word in another language can actually mean an entire paragraph. Um, English language doesn't quite have that level of sophistication, I think. Um, but the etymology of words, I, I love, um, you know, as an example, the, the word genius, um, actually means in Latin, um, the ability to have a spirit guide with you. Wow. And that we are born innately with spirit guides. That's the Latin description of what genius is and it's been so skewed to our modern day of what a genius is and um you know one of my chapters in my book is creative genius and i break down what that word really means we all have genius within us we all have creativity within us we may not tap into it um or tap into it the way we can and I think it's these little moments of aha for me, you know, these incredible and sometimes those experiences that I've had that have been just downright gut wrenching have been moments of profound clarity. But I'm at a point in my life right now where I want to to evolve with deeper states of consciousness through joy. I'll have some of that. <laughs> I mean, we're still living in three dimension, but as we ascend to, you know, into a fifth dimension reality, which I believe there are people absolutely on this planet that are, I think we're finding each other, which I think is fantastic. And that vibration is love. And we're not living in this dualistic world of black and white, yes or no, high or low, evil, 
you know, light. And yet we're, you know, so we're in this five dimension or we're moving into that five dimension and still being in a third dimensional reality, I think is fascinating because I think that although past avatars, Buddha, Jesus, I think that they came in at sixth dimension. I don't think that they came in in a third dimension reality, which is why they can come to life and then they close their auric field and we think that they have died and they haven't. They just transcended in a different way. And we're learning how to, in this game of life, in this labyrinth of life, we're learning how to springboard from being here in physical form on earth from three dimension to five dimension without having to leave our physical body. That I think is one of the most profound things that maybe was done in the golden age or in other, you know, lifetimes of, uh, you know, ancient civilizations where, you know, and I don't know, this is your area of expertise, but I can only imagine that there were just, it's like the cell phone. Nobody had the cell phone. Everybody has the cell phone. It took a very, very small and significant amount of time to have that leap. And, and I think the same thing is happening with consciousness where, you know, what do they say? You know, you only need 11%, but now people are saying, well, we only need 3% of the population. And then it springboards to like the masses and we'll see what happens. But I, you know, again, to get back to your question, I, I, the greatest, most important thing to me is my spiritual journey in, in, in consciousness. And because I make that such a high priority, along with my meditation, my breath work, you know, my spiritual practice, I mean, I'm, like you, I'm having, I'm having epiphanies and, and aha moments daily. Like, wow, wow, wow. I didn't know that. Like, wow, this is so cool. You know, I'm learning so much about myself. I'm learning so much about the world. I'm learning that every single thought and emotion that I have right now is so important to lay the groundwork of the experiences that I want, not what I don't want. And I say this all the time. Focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want because you're going to get what you don't want. There's so much interesting stuff in there, Lisa. And it's like, it's what I've been experiencing recently too is also, you know, what you said, being able to actually go through some very deep personal growth, spiritual growth, but doing it through joy. You know, I just got back from Italy and that week in Italy, I, I think I, had so many epiphanies, so many downloads, so many death and rebirth moments, and also deep healing moments that anyone who's been on the path of, of let's call it just self-improvement, uh, you know, spiritual growth, whatever, whatever you kind of want to call that, typically it involves some pretty dark times, a lot of pain and a lot of deep contemplative, but usually quite um, profoundly challenging emotionally speaking uh times and spaces to 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 grow and expand in that way and that's important too however recently i'm experiencing the same kind of growth same kind of incredible deep introspection and healing and all these things but it's coming from a joy it's coming from play and i'm like okay i like this let's <laughs> right, do more right. let's do more of that you know and uh, can we put a rinse and repeat on that one? Yeah, can we just uh, <laughs> supersize that, you know? <laughs> I want to combo this with even more joy and uh, fun expansion. And I, and I think that that's, you know, it, all the emotions are important. They're like our GPS, right? They guide us to what we need in this life, in this current situation. And they're all important. And the more I... The more I love my quote unquote negative emotions, the more I listen to my negative emotions and don't push them away, the less they become negative and the more they just become information that I can really use. And also it, ma it makes it way faster and easier to move through that emotion when you're not trying to move through it. You're trying to uh, absorb and, and take in the information that it's giving you. I find that's been really helpful. And I think I'd love to hear from you and also for the audience, 
you know, like all the stuff we've been talking about, you know, especially about raising our vibration to ascend to these, you know, this new earth and this new frequency, this fifth dimensional reality. What does that really mean for people in a day to day? Like when we, when you hear raise your vibration, like what does that mean to you? And what do you do on a, let's say daily basis that helps you continually raise your vibration? That's a great question. Um, the first part of your question is, you know, what does it mean to raise our vibration? And everything is vibration. You're a musician, right? And there is a mathematical equation within music. And to understand that we are like a chord or chords, and we can choose to be the black keys on the piano or the white keys. And everything is energy. Everything has a level of frequency. So the air we breathe, you know, the clothes on, on my back, the, you know, the speakers, the plants that are around me, a house, a building, the universe, everything. And when we have that understanding, I mean, for me, when I have that understanding and I get to feel what it's like to feel better, to feel lighter, you know, that's the daily, like what, you know, getting up in the morning, how, how am I going to experience my life today in joy and magic and miracles? I don't know about you, but I don't think a lot of people probably start their day that way. So, and, you know, I'm not saying this is what I want. I want this. I want that. I want, I'm saying what, how can I vibrate at a frequency that is going to match where my dreams and desires are? Because then it's effortless. I don't have to go search for it or try to find it or manipulate some experience so I can get what I want, you know, allow for an experience to find me because on a daily basis, I'm finding joy, even in the things that may be complex, even the things that may be in the moment, uncomfortable. And I'm using the word uncomfortable to express, you know, emotion. Maybe something pisses me off. Maybe, you know, again, maybe something is like, oh man, I can't believe, it. I mean, we had some technical issues today. It's like, okay, but you know, you and I are in the same boat. Like, okay, you know, we don't need to push the river. If it's not meant to be, do it another day. It's okay. But I don't think that's, if we did that every day and just say, you know what? I don't want to push the river. I want to pull goodness and happiness towards me it's a mindset and part of me to have this mindset that i am always cultivating every day meditation breath work i sit in stillness in my chair with my favorite tea for a minimum of five minutes i don't have a phone i'm not listening to anything i'm not reading anything I sit and look out the window and I just let life soak up. Let me hear the little whispers that I can't hear during my day, typically, because there's so much mind chatter going on. It's beautiful. Making that a habit when we look, that's, that's my self love. And now because I'm doing that, I, I get to feed myself. You know, we feed ourselves food, but we don't, we don't feed ourselves the spiritual food that we need. So that's, that's a, that's my lifeline. That's my lifestyle. How about you? Yeah. I, I love what you said too, but like, it makes me think of these, you know, people you'll hear it many times in certainly the spiritual world or even maybe religious world sometimes is looking for signs right like signs to do this signs to do to not do something and 
Um, this has been, you know, an age old phenomenon, but now the, when we talk about our reality as this, this video game and this, this sort of incredible reality where everything around us in a sense, it, we're, we're, I think we're in a way we're programmed out of thinking that it's a selfish thought, right? It's a selfish thought to think that the whole universe revolves around you, but it kind of does. And it doesn't, <laughs> it's like, you know, when, you, as you evolve and, and increase your, your consciousness, you feel the connectivity and you understand that we're all connected. So you don't have that egotistical view of I'm better than you. You just understand that I am you, <laughs> you are me. All of this is literally coming from one source of creation, which we all are are part of. Therefore, we're the same person in a sense. We're the same. Um, we're all we're all connected. So I started to look at signs, like yeah. lattice, right? like a lattice. We're all connected. And I think there's like, like this. There's like a Marvel movie out there. Was it's one of the. Uh, I don't oh, was it Doctor Strange or uh, or no. it's one of the Avengers? Oh no, I think it was a Guardians of Galaxy. I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> I don't remember. Sorry. I love Marvel for that too. Cause they, they just, they sprinkle in so many. And if you're watching, this is again, it's all about perception. So when you're watching like a, a movie and we talk about the matrix constants, I, I look at it as like a documentary. Um, you look at a lot of Marvel films and there's all like, there's so many nuggets of truth that they sprinkle in to all of these pop culture phenomenons. But if you have the right lens and perspective, you can see them and you can, you can take those those bits of wisdom. Otherwise, people might just see a bunch of explosions and nonsense. But you just look at things with a different perspective and you start to see that this reality around you is giving you so many different nuggets and so many different um, things that you can actually take as signs. But also, depending on your perception, you're going to see that as a negative sign or a positive sign. And so, for example, like you said, you know, we had technical difficulties at the beginning of recording this podcast. Well, maybe me three, four, five years ago would be like, oh man, like this is just so frustrating. Like I this has been working for me for so many years. Why isn't it working now? Like what the hell? Blah blah. You know, you're going into this whole story of and then you can your insecurities come through, like, oh man, like this is a ter terrible way to start this podcast with technical difficulties. What does this mean? La la. And you could just see the spiral going down and it's exhausting. Versus now we're like, okay, hey, guess what? If it's not meant, it's not meant. We'll move on. You know, there was the and the way we look at it, things now, I can, and I know this is a very relieving way for me. I'm like, then if that's what's meant, if that's what's happening right now, and it's so clear that we're not meant to record today, then great. That's clearly what's like meant to happen. There's obviously a great reason for it because I've experienced enough of this way of living now where I surrender to the things that kind of come into my existence through this magnetic frequency mm, formula in a way. And start looking at things not necessarily as good or bad. They just are, you know, oh, your flight was delayed. You're, you're going to be going here late. Right. Cool. Means I was not meant to be there at that time. Awesome. Great. I'm excited to see where life shoots me next or where, where what turn I'll take. Instead, so you start to look at life as like, like a, a choose your own adventure game, you know, and, and do you really want to know the end of that game? It's like any good movie. I don't want to be told the end of the film. Like, don't spoil you know the harry potter by telling me snape kills dumbledore or something like don't you know i i want to go along for i want to go along for the journey for the story um and that to me is one of the biggest my tools because i i have the same tools as you lisa meditation breath work i need movement like yoga and, and nature walks as much as possible things like that those are all great but ultimately it's all comes down to perspective mind over matter your, your perspective your mentality is everything it's everything yeah. so that that's where for me it all comes back down to that the tools are amazing and necessary super important but it's it's all like the perspective that it comes down to but i think that they're intertwined though you know i don't think you can have one without the other i think that the Absolutely. tools provide, you know the um this it, it provides the um the reservoir for lack of a better word, to be able to then expand perspective. Absolutely. And I think I wasn't probably clear too where my perspective came from the tools too, right? Yeah, so these right. forms forms of deep meditation where I get these ideas of, oh my God, I am in the simulation or I am in this like interesting holographic reality. That's come from having out of body experiences with plant medicine or deep meditation and deep contemplation and 
peace and serenity in nature and all of those things have, have helped me to gain that perspective. So I guess you're absolutely right. They're, they are completely intertwined. And that's what people can take away, especially from one of the many things you can take away from this episode would be the daily practices are so, are so important, you know? Um, and I just wanted to share where we've been talking quickly about um, vibration and consciousness, you know, a really fun thing people can look up if they aren't already familiar with um, the scale that, uh, Oh, what's his name? Uh, PhD guy that uh, put together the uh, basically a map of consciousness, and uh, he's able to put um, Hawkins. Yes, thank you. Hawkins scale of of consciousness and Hawkins vibration. Scale. I think that's um, the book is um, power versus force. force there it is, power versus power force. Versus thank you. Yeah. And so things like that, that, uh, no, actually, okay. So you'll love this. You know how I know this so well. So. His very last book I have right here. It's David Hawkins, MD, PhD. His very last book that he wrote, Rest in Peace, um, is called Letting Go. Oh, wow. And um, the very first book of his that I read is I Versus I, right? That was an amazing book. But Power Versus Force has this consciousness scale, and everything has a vibration to it. So I don't want to take away from that, but. No, like, like that. All, it's it's amazing. And so when people are like, "Oh, well, like, what do you mean, raise your vibration?" Well, it's as simple as feeling these more more of these emotions more frequently. Again, we're not supposed to mm-hmm. constantly feel like joy until maybe we've ascended to some incredible like higher state. Then maybe that is the case. But as, certainly, as human beings as we are right now, there's nothing wrong with feeling these quote unquote negative emotions. That's important. However. What we're working towards is feeling on a more higher majority of the level of things like peace, joy, love. And so on the scale, he's able to measure in some sense what um, what what these emotions are. So at the bottom of the level, you got shame, which is a which is a 20 out of the scale. And then guilt, that's a 30. Apathy is a 50. Grief is 75. Fear, 100. Desire, 125. Anger is 150. Pride, 175. Courage uh, is at 200 and neutrality is at 250. Neutrality is very obviously neutral. And that's yeah. a beautiful, that's yeah. like, a, that's a place of letting go in a lot of ways. I think um, neutrality really helps with let, like just that idea of like, I'm just going to almost in a sense surrender to this flow of my life. Uh, but that's, and then it just continues to go up, you know, acceptance, 350, reason, 400, love, 500, joy, 540. P 600 and enlightenment is 700 plus, which is at the top of the scale. And so when we're talking about raising our vibrations, that's one of the more simplistic and tangible ways is just to kind of check in with how you're feeling every day. And like you're saying, Lisa, like go into the day, expect expecting miracles and magic, you know, go in with that, like, wow, I wonder what interesting things are going to come into my sphere today. And that can help. Yeah. I love, yeah. I love that you brought in David Hawkins stuff. Um, I, I love his work. One of the most profound things that I read, I don't remember which book it was, and it may have been Power Versus Force, but one of the most important things about this consciousness scale, and it's, um, I don't think it's called the consciousness scale, but I think it's called something slightly different. But at the lowest scale, think about how many people live in shame and in guilt And we'll have another podcast around the dogma principles and the collective culture of religion and how that keeps people in a state that is in the lowest vibration. And as we ascend um, our consciousness as humanity, when, for example, when Jesus was on earth playing, he was one avatar that was vibrating at such a high frequency that he was able to, and this is David Hawkins's um, interpretation. He was able to cancel out all the negative collective energy so that at his birth or death resurrection, it started at zero again. And now as we are, increasing as a collective through the last, you know, 
2000 years, 20, um, more and more people are raising their vibration and canceling out more people. So what I mean by that is they're canceling out the negative and it's like a, it's like a scale, right? So what we're trying to do instead of having one person, right. Or one soul or one avatar come in and, and, and try to transcend the entire humanity now we're seeing a rise of more enlightened people that are bringing about the cancellation of negative energy that will I'll just use the word shifting the pole, right? So it's not based on just a few avatars coming in to shift the collective. When I, that would be one of those moments when you had asked me, you know, in your life, I, I remember what I was doing, where I was, what I was wearing, the exact moment when I read that in the book. And I was like, oh, okay. And something happened. And this was years ago. I mean, this was like in the early 2000s. And I just remember like something inside of me absolutely changed. And I was forever changed by understanding that. It's like enlightenment through knowledge and, and understanding, right? Like there's so many ways to quote unquote raise our vibration or to attain this kind of ambivalent, not ambivalent, this like um, ambiguous idea of of uh, enlightenment, right? It's different for anyone that ever talks about it. But really what that is, is just coming into a better understanding of, of life and your own self and reality around you and within you. And when you, it's, it can be through meditation, it can be through reading a book, you know, it can be through going, going to a lecture, listening to a podcast, you know, going down a YouTube rabbit hole. Um, I watch a lot of Gaia. It's great, uh, great streaming platform for a lot of people. If you're interested in expanding consciousness, anything on that platform is going to help do you do that for you. Uh, through information and through video. And so there's so many, it doesn't have to just be, and I do encourage people to go through the more, let's say, organic approaches like meditation, uh, nature walks, uh, a million other things, breath work, things like that. But also, you know, modern day technology isn't such a bad thing um, overall. Let's take advantage of the internet, all the knowledge around us and just learn, you know, soak up this stuff. And I know Lisa and myself are avid learners, like addicted to learning and, uh, all the fun that comes from just every day there's new things to to enhance our experience that we can that we can learn about our reality and so that's also a fun way i mean i, I know that for me has been a big uh part of my own awakening has actually all come th well, not all but a lot of it's come through knowledge at the end of the day yeah i think um you know thinking about the scale of david hawkins is to me a uh, it's a phenomenal way to check um when do you feel guilty what what does that look like when it comes up for you or if you feel shame or if you're feeling like these low vibrational feelings um to to have the courage um because you are worth it mm -hmm. right we are all worth it listener <laughs> to take a moment to see where did that come from and is it even yours and for the most part when we get to a certain age we are not really ourselves we are a fragment or a fractal of who we really are because we've been conditioned and programmed by our preachers and teachers and peers and media and you know, parents and da, 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 right? So part of this, one of the reasons that Chris and I are doing this is it's an amazing journey to be the onion and to heal back that those layers like, man, that's not me either. That's not me. I thought that was me. I was carrying around that thing for a long time. I don't really want that anymore in my life. Okay, take that away take that away. And what, what we have found together, you know, I don't want to speak for you, Chris, but you know, I know you and you know me, it's like, 
man, does it feel so amazing to have all these incredible epiphanies about what no longer serves us. The lightness that we feel like, man, I thought that that was who I was. I thought that that was who I was supposed to become, but that was an interpretation of somebody else that I, I was becoming. And so take the moment, you know, you owe it to yourself to just say, you know what? I want to change today. What one thing can I see about myself that, that could be maybe altered and find that forgiveness thread. Ugh. I mean, that sits in, in, in the soul hard and deep for me is that forgiveness thread. And when we forgive mainly ourselves, there's, there's this redemption. This is amazing. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's, and that's so huge is to forgive yourself. It's again, the, um, the, the emphasis comes back to yourself and it's not in this selfish way. It's not like, you know, it, it might to those who are maybe more in the beginning of this journey sound like, wow, it's really uh, self-involved, you know? And you're like, well, you kind of, your, your life is your life. <laughs> and the funny thing is that you know, I, I, I can say this because that this was me in, in my past version of my life where, you know, very much people pleaser, very much wanting to do all this, all these great things for other people. And the, the last person on that list to help was me. And all of a sudden I get left in the gutter basically where I've helped out everyone else. I've, I've spent all this energy and time and and love and emotional capacity on everyone else in my life um to to do all these things and then i forget about myself every single time and then what ends up happening is you just like it takes a toll and that toll took me many years to actually work through um the not only the emotional and physical toll that takes on my body and my mind and my heart and everything like that but also the relationship with myself that I had to, it's basically like, you got to start thinking, well, you don't have to do anything. But one thing I would suggest is to start looking at yourself as your best friend. And would you say the things that you say to yourself to your best friend? Would you neglect your best friend the way that you neglect yourself? Right. And it's usually a pretty easy, simple answer, or it doesn't have to be your best friend. Think if it's something resonates deeper, like a, a niece or a nephew or a son or a daughter or grandparents or whatever well, whatever version you can that has the most emotional pull to it just ask yourself would i what i'm doing to myself or not doing for myself would i do that or not do that for for my loved one because then then it shifts and then you can start to actually develop a relationship with yourself and then forgive yourself love yourself all of these things and then interestingly enough that's as that's when you get to see your external world completely shift completely I, shift and it's a beautiful no, I thing love to witness it's so great that you said that, Chris. I mean, that's that's an amazing um, opportunity for others, you know, you know, to our listeners, and you know, to really take that step of being your best friend. I mean, where do we get? Where do we learn this? Nowhere. Was it from the edge? Yeah, we learn it from. But we don't. Someone's got to do it. Right. I know. I'll take it on. Sure. Let's well, take it on. Like you said, like it's not taught in schools. I agree. Like there's no institutions in our modern day that do this. Right. So and we're we're not hearing it certainly in media. Um, there's still so much competition and control in our in our mainstream media and in even social media. Um you know. I want to just add one thing because I'm hearing, I'm sure that our audience may really resonate with what you said, which I can too, which is, you know, especially those of you who are interested in a podcast like this, right? I mean, there's a reason that there's an interest here and that you're still listening. Um, you may be like, yeah, I'm always giving. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of an empath and I'm, and I, and I don't know how to get out of that. Well, there's, there's one other thing that I think is attached to that and it may sting a little bit, but it's another form at times to be in victim mentality. 
you know, I've given, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, and now I'm depleted. And I, you know, I don't, that's, that's scarcity model victim mentality. And when we own that and say, you know, I don't, nah, I don't, I don't want that for me anymore. We don't, we don't, there's not like some opposite that we go like, well, I'm going to be selfish. I'm not going to do anything for anybody. No, no, no. It's that there is a freedom and a sovereignty that comes out of an awareness of, I'm going to take control of me by taking care of me and taking care of myself is the path to sovereignty is the path to freedom. And the, the amount that you expand in your capacity to care for and love others goes through the roof, right? I mean, it's, it's amazing that when we give ourselves that space of love, of honor, of our own commitment to self, we are able to then expand on our ability to do that for others even more so and not feel depleted. Yeah. I mean, that's the motivation, right? If you're the kind of person that is just like always wanting to give, uh, which is beautiful, that's how you can give more is to give to you first. It's the classic oxygen mask analogy. You got to put it on yourself first before you can help <laughs> others, right? Like let's, right. let's just give ourselves some love first and foremost. And then, and then it will expand even more outwards. So I love that. I completely agree. It's a good reminder. Well, I'll tell you, I, I know you and I have several different um, topics that we want to get to, and we will. We're going to make this a weekly podcast. We're so excited that you joined. Um, thank you so much for being a part of it. Um, please leave your comments below. We'd love to have any questions you have. That's the big juicy part for me. I just love when people come with different questions um, because that just creates the community and, and clarity. Um, in my past, there have been moments in my life where I've listened to someone and they say something that click inside of me that I couldn't put into words before. So maybe that's happening to you right now, or maybe you have a question about something that we would just love, love, love to answer for you. So I don't know, Chris, I mean, this is, this feels great. Yeah, it feels really fun. This is why we, this is why we're doing the podcast is because uh, we love talking about this stuff. And of course, this is just the next stage is to record it and then put it out to the universe to, to reality so that you beautiful people can receive this uh, these frequencies and this just this information and obviously a lot of love coming at you all watching and listening and um, you know just to piggyback on what Lisa was saying we're going to have in the show notes um, for this podcast a lot of links that you guys can follow up on and learn more about Wisdom from the Edge learn more about Lisa what she's up to her books um, also the courses offered and things like that for Wisdom of uh, Wisdom from the Edge because what we're doing here is really an extension of this, this podcast, which is to, you know, inform and to give actionable everyday tools um, that you can take into your life. It's great to talk about the high, high level stuff, but how do we bring it in to reality to on an everyday basis, continue to upgrade and, and to expand and, and, and improve our lives essentially. So lots of great resources there, check it down the show notes and uh, ways to contact us as well. We'll be in there. And of course, uh, as Lisa said, it's all about the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Anything you want us to talk about or just comments of, of how you felt receiving this episode. So uh, yeah, certainly from my end, I'll say thank you so much for watching and listening, tuning in, and uh, be sure to check out our next episode of Wisdom from the Edge. Thanks so much uh, as well, Lisa. It's awesome just chatting with you as, well. as always. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Chris. Same to you. Okay. Thank you again. Take Bye, care. Everyone. Take care, thank everyone. You. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Wisdom from the Edge. I'm your co-host, Chris Noble, and on behalf of Lisa Brazelton and myself, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in, uh, checking out the episode today, and being a part of this unfolding as we are here to essentially stimulate conversation and expand consciousness through love and through information. And so in doing so, if you want to support our channel, please like and subscribe. 
Be sure to message us if you have any questions or things that you'd like for us to cover on the show. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, just stay curious and stay kind and connected to one another on this beautiful planet and this beautiful galaxy. So from us to you, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time on the next episode of Wisdom from the Edge.